Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shirai and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the Indian Institute of Information Technology Public-Private Partnership Bill 2017. The bill seeks to provide a legal framework for the state governments to set up institutes for information technology in the public-private partnership mode. To discuss the issue, I have with me Mr. Pawan Duggal, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court and Dr. Manoj Kumar Pateria, Director, CSIR, NIS, CAIR. But before we get into a discussion, let's have a look at what all is there in this proposed legislation. From relatively small beginning, the Indian information technology industry has emerged as a strong and credible force and is now recognized as a major constituent of the global information technology service industry. At present, there are 15 functional Indian Institutes of Information Technology in public-private partnership mode. The Indian Institutes of Information Technology set up in public-private partnership mode is required to be given legal status and enable the institute to grant degrees to the students. Okay, institution of national importance serves as a pivotal player in developing highly skilled personnel in the specified region and of the country. IT was booming in Hyderabad, Bangalore and Mumbai. Now government is trying to spread its reach to different other parts of the country so that we have highly skilled manpower in IT field. And this enforcement of this bill will further develop the development of this sector. And these uh, institutes are going to work on uh, cutting edge technology. And I, uh, India is already superpower in IT. So it will further enhance the brand image of the country in the global arena. Uh, in this bill, there is a full autonomy to the institutes. As of now, four Indian Institutes of Information Technology have been established at Jabalpur, Kanchipuram, Gwalior and Allahabad, which are public funded and governed by the Indian Institutes of Information Technology Act of 2014. It provides undergraduate as well as postgraduate education with specialization in allied areas. The Indian Institute of Information Technology Public-Private Partnership Bill 2017 defines Public-Private Partnership PPP as a partnership under a scheme of the centre which provides for establishment of institutes through collaboration between the centre, the state government and the industry partner. Industry partners can be individuals, trusts and companies or societies. In order to establish an institute, the state government will identify at least one industry partner for collaboration and submit a proposal to the centre. The centre will decide on the proposal on the basis of the capital investment for establishing the institute to be borne by the centre the concerned state government and industry partner in the ratio of 50 is to 35 is to 50. Expertise and standing of the industry partners, assessment of the capability, financial and other resources of the industry partners to support the institute and the availability of infrastructure, including land between 50 to 100 acres to be provided by the state government free of cost. Public is represented by the government, whether state or central government, and private institutions are the domain experts in the industry. Now they both come together. The state has got the resources, and uh, the industry has got uh, the uh, where the technology is moving. Now when they get together and design a syllabus and design a research project, it is something which matches with the industrial needs of the present times and also beats the present into the future. So the public-private partnership is very, very important for any academic institution, especially those dealing with technology, because technology is the fastest changing domain. So this public-private partnership, which is now being stressed under this bill, will help our institutions, uh, the uh, ones which have been given the national importance, to be in sync with the global uh, industry standards. The power of Indian Institute of Information Technology to grant degrees will enhance the acceptability of degrees being awarded by the institutes. As the students of five existing Indian Institute of Information Technology have completed their graduation in 2017, there is an urgent need to give them legal recognition. The Indian Institute of Information Technology 
Public Private Partnership Bill 2017 was introduced by the Minister of Human Resource Development Prakash Javrekar in Lok Sabha on April 10, 2017. With Nishtha Malhotra, Amritan Shurai, Rajya Sabha team. So the legal framework that has been provided allows the private expert or the private partner which is from the industry side to get in 15% of the equity which is actually a major foothold in the institution, a stakeholder in the institution. So that is what we would like to talk about sir. Uh, getting, allowing them to have this kind of a share in the entire institute. Uh, where do you think is it going to uh, really benefit? Student-wise, market-wise, technology-wise, connect with the global markets? I think it is very good initiative of the government and uh, very welcome uh, decision by the government uh, for setting, setting up all these uh, 15 Indian Institutes of Information Technology under PPP model. And uh, as uh, we see India is moving forward in the 21st century, with the objective of uh, digital India right. and connecting the entire country in the digital age. So for which, uh, as we have just seen uh, the report over here, we require adequate manpower, especially to man these kinds of activities in the country, spanning all uh, length and width of the country. So we require a huge manpower to realize this dream of digital India, for which we require institutional setup. So I think it is uh, very important. And as you said, how it is going to impact on the overall scenario of the technical education, especially in information technology, as well as with the industry. Uh, I think uh, it is uh, going to be a boon for uh, the entire scenario of uh, information technology and digital India sector. And as far as the research is concerned, I believe that there are a number of laboratories available in the country, a huge network under the umbrella of the CSIR, that is the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, uh, uh, ICMR, DRDO, and ICAR and uh, uh, a plethora of research is available in the in the laboratories. But how this research how is the going, to, can actually going, going to reach the market? So there requires a kind of a specialized skill. So but how this can be converted to market savvy that right. industry can take it up. Right. So these kinds of uh, manpower we are able to produce out of this PPP model, I think that is going to be great. So that's where they will be able to reach out to the technologies that are already have developed and uh, available with you exactly people. exactly what w the way it has been uh, framed the legal framework uh, we just put out a story for you uh, Pavan so how do you think the future is going to pan out and especially the skilled force that is required for this kind of a uh, uh, industry and also the legal framework provided and the uh, hand holding with industry all put together what kind of a uh, uh, setup do you see well, I think first and foremost, this legislation is a path-breaking legislation because for the first time, the government has decided to encourage legislatively by a legal framework, the public-private partnership model specifically in the area of information technology education. Now, we've had earlier programs and projects of the government, but they mm. have been more one-offish. This is for the first time an institutional legal sanctity and framework has been accorded. Number two, when I look at this entire bill, which has now been passed by both the Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha. Lok Sabha yeah. The bill is uh, drafted in, in a very futuristic manner. Why? Because it's talking, it's presuming that we will constantly need to keep on expanding the scope of capacity building in the country. And that's why initially it's starting with just 15, but it's opening up the doors for 150 more uh, triple ITs uh, of India Correct. to come in in even the smaller areas. When I look at uh, the budget of 2018, uh, uh, I quickly look at the focus of the government on increasing connectivity and uh, the digital access to services in the uh, rural areas. And I think this kind of uh, legislation is going to help further thrust, uh, provide a basis for more capacity building on information technology related issues in the not so urban areas and in the rural areas as well. Uh, so, um, Mr. Pateria, uh, see, the, the bill clearly states that these institutes are now going to be given the status of institutes of national importance. What does that actually mean for the institution, for the students, in the legal setup? What does that actually translate to? 
Yeah, it is uh, a kind of first thing is the expansion. Uh, earlier, uh, it was confined to five, four or five institutions. Correct. Now we are reaching to 20 plus, yeah. plus 15. It's a it's an expansion. So the broad basing has giving the happened. leverage uh, uh, to the people who are residing in nooks and corners of the country. They can also take advantage of these kinds of uh, institutions of national importance. One thing that I could uh, see from the bill that is very important. There are people who are working in the industry, and uh -huh. they want to fine tune their skills further uh -huh. at academic level at research level. So they have the limitations. At the same time, they also do some PhD or some research work. So the bill provides an opportunity for these people to join these academic institutions, that is triple IITs, while working in industry and getting their PhDs done. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the industry has specific sets of requirements, specialist sets of skills. So for which they want the trained manpower. So if this PPP model works and that, that is going to work uh, really, so they can also define the terms and conditions that so what kind of people was, they want. Institute of National Importance, what does that actually mean in terms of funding, autonomy and the legal fr framework? Uh, as, uh, yes, so th this is the technical framework. As, as far as legal framework is, is concerned, it is autonomous institutions uh, yeah. set up that is governed by its own board of governors with uh, minimum uh, interference by the government. It is working with the central government, with the state government, as well as the uh, uh, industry partner. As uh, has been seen from the report that 50% resources are coming from the central government, 35% resources are coming uh, from the state government, including the land. Hmm. Land, is, land is a part. Yeah. And 15% resources are coming from the uh, partner, partner, industry partner. Industry partner could be an individual of the Trust. level of an institution yes. Yes. or an institution as well. Right. So this gives lot of leverage for autonomy, for uh, creating new ideas, uh, giving a scope for uh, uh, innovation and development. So I think that makes these institutions necessarily important. Um, uh, Pavan, I just want you to uh, uh, throw some light on the issue of uh, uh, the digitization push that is being made by the government. Where do you see these institutions falling into or joining the dots or getting uh, the entire highway of skill uh, available for the big push of digitization that the government has been uh, constantly at. See, the government has had a remarkable vision of uh, transforming India into a knowledge society and economy by virtue of the Digital India program. But that actually requires vehicles, that requires engines of growth. And I think these uh, PPP uh, model based uh, IIITs of, the, uh, of India are going to be exactly doing that. They will propel far more creation of new opportunities for uh, capacity building. The very fact that they've got the private people in and have given them substantial uh, equity is very, very clear that they do not want only academic-based approaches for these students who are coming in. So they will be given more internship. They will be uh, giving hands-on training by the industry partner. and. As I'm looking at the, the bill, it's saying that the industry partner is going to actively participate in the governance. Yes. Which we, we, effectively means yeah, we, that you are now going to marry the professional and the academic skills together into one unique mix. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's missing in all our existing educational institutions. I look at all universities and colleges. They're only honed at looking at the academic, academic aspects. Parts, but for the yeah. first time here with the hands-on approach, I think we are going to create a digital skill force a workforce that's going to help propel the growth of India into a digital society and economy. So uh, it's time for us to head into a break. When we come back, we will tell you how the bill empowers the industry partnership and the regulatory framework. The Indian Institute of Information Technology Public-Private Partnership Bill 2017 empowers the industry partner by allowing them to co-create programs as per requirements of the industry, actively participate in governance and funding and mentoring startups in the institution.
The bill clearly states that the proposal for new institutes in public-private partnership mode may be accepted or rejected. Once it has been accepted, the centre will enter into a Memorandum of Understanding MOU, with the concerned state government and the industry partners for setting up the institute. The MOU will outline details such as the investment proposal of capital and the commitment of the centre, state and the industry partner in ensuring autonomy of the institutes among other issues. See, there are uh, many kinds of stakeholders in this model. First, you have the students. So the students will get the exposure to the cutting-edge technology. When they graduate, uh, they will be industry ready. And uh, if they want to start up something of their own, they will be ready with that knowledge which will be the market's need. Second stakeholder are researchers. Now, a lot of these researchers are either embedded as students or as faculty members. They will get an opportunity to work on live industry projects because this is a PPP model, public-private partnership model. So they will get to work in industry and where the world is going. So they, they are, their research is right at the edge of the technology. And the third stakeholder is the nation as a whole, whether it's the government or people. Now, we are already talking about how job losses are happening right globally but it's not actually job loss it is job shift so new jobs are being created in another advanced technology domain which we are right now not really abreast with the indian institutes of information technology public private partnership bill 2017 empowers the industry partner by allowing them to co-create programs as per the requirement of the industry actively participating in the governance of the institutes and funding and mentoring startups in the institution. The bill sets up a board of governors as the main policy making and executive body of the institute. The board of each institute will have up to 15 members. The bill also creates a senate which will be the principal academic body. Each institute will create a corpus fund for its long-term sustainability. The bill sets up a tribunal of arbitration to deal with disputes arising from contract between an institute and any of its employees. It first of all needs to understand why we are doing it. And I think it's a big step in the right direction. Um, the world today, and especially India's position in the technology industry, is well recognized. But we need to go through a significant amount of retraining and reskilling. Therefore, this whole terming institution process allows us to create that whole environment which is wider and allows a larger access to people to get themselves skilled on technology and retrained for further jobs, further opportunities and more than important than that, creating opportunities. The bill sets up a coordination forum to discuss matters of common interest to all the institutes. Its functions include advising the centre to include or exclude an institution in the bill's schedule. Each institute will be expected to maintain a fund which will consist of funds from the government and other sources including fees, grants and donations. The bill was tabled in the parliament after a long process of consultation with all stakeholders including concerned state governments, industry partners, chairpersons and directors of the existing institutes. With Nishtha Malhotra, Amritan Shurai, Rajya Sabha team. So the bill just doesn't stop at just providing a legal framework. It goes beyond and not just provides for skill creation, but also takes, up, takes it up to the level of startups. Now that entire journey is a pretty big achievement which that bill tries to kind of uh, bring together onto one platform. So, uh, mentoring and active participation, two crucial roles that the industry partner, the private side will have to get. I'm not focusing too much on the government side because they already have a huge bandwidth of research, academics and everything. But this is for the first time that actually a practitioner of technology is being brought on board to benefit the institute and take it to a completely new level. So mentoring and active participation in the management of the institute. These two aspects, how do you see this panning out? I think... Uh these are going to be game-changing aspects because if when I look at existing educational um, laws and uh, acts of parliament, they haven't really focused on this. So to that extent, this particular legislation is more futuristic. Why? 
because you're not only giving an active participation in the governance of the triple IT to the industry partner, you're actually giving him the freedom to bring in its own experienced information technology personnel to come as adjunct faculty who's going to teach the students. It is going to give the freedom and uh, the flexibility to the industry partner to encourage, mentor students to engage in research-based projects. Now, in a country where R&D is pretty much at a back end and a, uh, is at a low priority, this kind of a focal uh, thrust of this legislation on increasing research and development is going to be massively helping India in creating the right kind of R&D for the digitization of the nation as well. How do you, how long do you see the whole thing? The institutes are already up. They have been given that status. The framework is out there. So this actually resulting onto the ground level, how long do you think that journey is going to take? Just trying to understand before these people actually start getting into industry, one batch is already out. The first batch with their uh, certification, it happened last year. So it's already happening. But this step of getting the industry partner, that is the new thing that is going to... So how long do you think it's going to take? Your take on the uh, timeline. I think it should take at least about two to three years for this to start seeing some concrete results. Why? Because the rules are not yet out. Once hmm. the rules will be out, that's the time the industry player will have more clarity. Hmm. And you'll have to give the industry player at least one or two academic years to bring in the right kind of adjunct faculty, to encourage students to come up with the right kind of research projects, to give them placement opportunities. Now, industry people and industry players have a vested selfish interest in making this model be a success. Why? Because they'll be able to get ready-made uh, professional workforce which they can absorb without having uh, to really think about much. Okay. And since you are already mentoring them, you're hand-holding them, <coughs> you're giving them projects as per what, what is the requirement of the industry, so this particular workforce, I think, will be on a far more higher pedestal as compared to the normal academic uh, output of universities per se. And if I am an industry player, I would want to definitely hire these kind of students because they'll be on a much higher uh, uh, skill quotient. Um, uh, Mr. Pateria, the co-creation co of programs. Now that is one aspect because it's, uh, uh, it's a term which is regularly used by everyone but understood not by all. So if you can explain to us what this co-creating actually means and how the industry really value adds to the whole process. Yeah, this co-creation is uh, very important as far as triple IITs are concerned and uh, as uh, we could uh, gather uh, the insight uh, that opportunities are immense. Uh, ranging from, uh, say, uh, these institutes are spanned all across the country, especially working in the far flung areas. So they can uh, develop a connectivity with the with the rural folk, rural folks. Like uh, there is a possibility for precision farming. Mm. They should be work, uh, They should be working in the farming sector, uh, ranging from uh, uh, identification of diseases uh, to health card, soil health card. All that require precision technology. Mm -hmm. So from where that precision technology is going to come? So industry and academia, if they work together and create some new kind of uh, uh, ventures and uh, provide some capital uh, input to do some new innovation and involving all these students and faculty members for pushing that idea, I think that can really work wonders. As a matter of fact, something like 96% of precision technology we are importing from outside. My God. Look at the opportunity amongst all of the students who are coming out of these institutions in, 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 in the recent years. It is going to come. If they can change the really the game, game changer, it can become the game, game changer for the, uh, for the country. If they change the game for uh, uh, this reversing the scenario, importing 96% to exporting to some extent, I think that would be a great advantage. And I could see another opportunity that now uh, we can attract a number, India being an excelling in information technology. That is a, that is a, a fact mm -hmm. uh, recognized the world over. Yeah, yeah, globally. So these institutions of uh, uh, national importance, not only national but international importance, are going to boost, give a boost for that. Attracting lot many students from different countries, like from Gulf countries, from African countries, from Asian so countries. So the opportunity is what you're saying is yeah, immense. Exactly. So uh, whether it and be... And they can work together and co-generate more opportunities, more innovation, more startups. Thereby more on, uh, yeah. So very quickly, on the startup side, you've already indicated the precision uh, technology that is required to meet the uh, last uh, 
man's need, yeah. uh, especially in the agricultural field. So startups, how do you think is it really going to broad base the whole startup business in the country quickly? Sir? Yeah, this is. Uh, I think this is a kind of uh, uh, a kind of maturity that India is now gaining. Earlier, earlier people uh, were simply afraid of uh, these startups. Now the evidences are there. Mm -hmm. New youngsters are coming. They are really working wonders. Mm -hmm. So with this help of national institutions like Triple IITs and the government, state government support, industry support, and the central government support, I think it will really a, an idea. Uh, to, uh, broad make, to make them successful and uh, broad Very base. quickly, yeah. last word, Pawan, on the startups and then we'll wrap. I think this is going to be tremendously helping in boosting the startup ecosystem because startups require good quality research. And when you have these kind of students who will be doing cutting edge research on new emerging technologies, whether it's artificial intelligence, whether it's Internet of Things, whether it's blockchains or other new technologies, including quantum computing, I think these are going to provide new fresh ideas for further growth of not just industry, but India as a nation per se. So basically what uh, uh, I could gather from this whole discussion is that for the digital highway, the skills first, then the industry gets in, gets takes the technology to a completely new level and allows mentoring par, uh, startups and also industries active participation in the Indian Institute of Information Technology. And these are of, uh, these are institutes of national importance. One thing sir, we can add yes, sir. Uh, that uh, being PPP model, uh, they can induct the international faculty also. So, so through that the PPP, that's another yeah. Uh, yeah. advantage of yeah. the whole uh, legal framework. Thank you, sir, for joining us on this discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can watch our shows on the RSTV page of YouTube. We'll be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Raj Sabha TV.